Four years ago, I went to see my cousin for lunch at her workspace. And she works as a social worker in a mental asylum. And she warned me before I turned up not to be afraid, not to be scared, not to be shocked. And once I arrived, I said, are you joking? I'm fascinated by this place. So the next day I went to meet the director of the facility. And I explained her my intention, which was the best one. And I'll tell you later about what it was. And she gave me full pass to arrive every day and just wander around the corridors, playrooms and film. And that was the time that I actually learned the most about perception and what perception is. And that was the time when I stopped using social media and got cut off from my life, from my social life, from my professional life. Um, and was actually some, I was very sad to leave at the end. Um, I think for my sanity at the time, I, it was really ironic that I was spending time with people that are perceived as insane. One afternoon after lunch, uh, we went back to the bedrooms and I sat down with a group of girls and started interviewing them. And I was asking them how old they were and one of them was 20 and another one was 21. And, um, and I said, well, so you're just a one year difference and they couldn't, fig they couldn't understand what I was saying. So I asked them, what is 21 minus one? And one of them said, 20. And the other one looked at her and said, no, you're stupid. It's two. In that moment, I, I was shocked. I, they were both right. And I could not say what they, they, they were both right because I could see what both of them see and their perception was com just different. And it's, it's the same way that if, let's say, you were sitting in a cafe and you saw two women with a baby walking past, you would think maybe it's the mother with a baby and, and with her own mother. But maybe it's the nanny and, and her younger sister. The, the possibilities are endless. So to be right, you can never be categorical about anything. And we live within 10 different realities and we have to sometimes stay in a neutral zone and, and understand that there are 10 different realities then 10 different things that the 10 different people will be thinking. And there are different perceptions. So I think all of us can relate to that. Um, not just the two girls in a mental asylum and um, people were asking me after they saw the film, they, they asked me, how did you manage to stay in such a horrific environment? And I must say that I haven't laughed as much as I did there. Um, I think the irony of life is funny and we should all laugh at that. And uh, the examples that they saw there, I think we all have them in our own lives. So after my month finished, I went back to London, the big, great city that everybody thinks that if you live there, all your dreams will be achieved. I sometimes think it's a propaganda that it is sold to us to think that if you want to achieve anything in life, you have to, be in, to live in the capital city. And at the end, all I see, every time I dip in and out, I just return and I see my friends being so exhausted and running, running in a rat race and not even knowing what they're racing for. It's a world where social validation, social currency um, drives your success. And social media plays a huge part of that. And um, the contrast was so huge and I knew that I came back a changed person. And I started thinking more and more what social, what, what are the social media impacts on our health, especially mental health. It has altered the way that we communicate with each other. It has altered the way that we date. It has killed the romance in many ways. I just feel like our brains have been programmed to 
bend down and scroll the same screen over and over again, waiting for that one hit of dopamine that gives us validation. And it's a huge, huge addiction. It's something that we don't think about. When we think of addiction, people usually think about alcohol, smoking, drugs, but we don't realize that we're all addicts. Whatever it's shopping, sex, sugar, food, social media, love, chaos, stress, lateness, these are all addictions. And we give a device to a young child, and I think it was all very fun at the beginning, um, when it all started off, but we know now, and we should be better, because it belongs to us, it should belong to us, and I think it's something that should be regulated, and uh, people should be educated about. When we didn't know smoking was bad, you would get cigarettes prescribed. Um, now we know it's bad, so we, <laughs> we treat those addictions. Before social media, it was Hollywood movies that were informing our opinions about the society, gender roles, and um, even racism. If you look at the movies from the 80s, there's so many misogynist, racist jokes that back then they could get away with it. Not today, thank God. Um, but, and the same future will have to ha happen in social media. The, the content that we receive every single day is making us think less and it's not moving us forward. That's why we also need filmmakers and content creators to be socially conscious and be extremely cautious in what content they're delivering to the public and how that, what impact that content has on our societies is shaping us as a better society. When I made a movie about transgender community in Mexico City, I thought I was going to interview drug addicts and prostitutes. But the people that I met were actually architects, entrepreneurs, models, influencers. There were people that worked during the day and people that were, no matter the odds and the difficulties and challenges they face every single day, they were actually getting out of bed and going for the fight for their dreams. And I realized that the sensationalist storytelling is not, if I were to go out there and make a film about the, the prostitutes and, and drug addicts, I would not be helping their community and I would not be helping the society to see them as people. So I've showed the great example of the difference and I've, in that moment I realized how documentary is so powerful as a tool to change the world and change our perceptions. Because don't forget that Hollywood has had a long distance relationship for the longest time with Washington and CIA. And a lot of films go past through there. And now most of the content and, and stories and news that we actually see comes through social media, not the TV or the movies. People don't even have the ten enough attention to sit throughout the movie. So the content that you see is also heavily influenced by people that want to control us. Um, COVID has happened and the world has changed forever. It will never be the same. I think we have already enough documentaries about serial killers. I think we already have enough telenovelas. I think we already have enough um, stupid talk shows that have incredible speakers on, as their guests, but they rather ask about their dating life, which is non-existent because they're simply too busy, uh, instead of their knowledge. And um, their knowledge, their intelligence, and their, their point of view that might be enrich enriching to the public instead of trying to get some gossip. To be honest, human nature has not changed because if that was happening today, I'm sure that a lot of people would be curious to see something like that. I think it's completely inevitable that eventually we will have regulations imposed on social media. Um, 
as I said, was fun at the beginning, but now we know and, and, and we need to protect our kids. Uh, it's an extremely addictive practice and we are, we are so foolish that, you know, even if, even if you would say parents should start regulating, that's absolutely true because don't expect that from politicians anytime soon. So it should start within your own household. The problem is that most of the parents are hooked on their phones themselves. So, but if as a parent, if you see that it's having an impact on you, on your mental health, on your relationships, on your moods and your self-confidence, think what it will do to your children. No one is safe at this point. The only call you should answer is the wake-up call. And I would suggest try to leave your phone next door when you go to sleep. Because the first two minutes when you wake up, spent with yourself will be may, way more beneficial than the lost time on Instagram that will probably turn into 20 minutes. And at the end of it, you, you, you haven't really gained anything. We're all on a quest for happiness. And I'll tell you that one thing that social media won't give you that. It will give you a quick fix, but then you will come down crashing, wanting for more. And it's just, it's not gonna be there. It's not there, it's never, never, never been there. Um, I may sound really negative, there's so many wonderful things about social media. It has changed our lives for better, for the way that we connect with, with, with people. You might be on a holiday and then you, you run into an old friend after so many years just by knowing that you're in the same place while you would have never known. So it has created so many beautiful things in our lives, but anything good too much ends up being bad. And I think at this point, it's became a social norm for people to be constantly on their phones. Not, we don't even look into each other's eyes when we meet. We don't, we don't even smile. If you, if, you, if you ask someone for directions on the street, because the apps sometimes still fail you, it's technology, um, you may not even look into those, that person's eyes. Do we, do, we, do we connect to people that are serving us food in a restaurant? Not that much. We don't look into each other's eyes anymore. We don't smile at each other anymore. We, we're just like robots. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and social media is completely unnatural to us humans. It's, it's, it's almost like an alien force that is now interacting in, in the way that we interact with each other. And it's unnatural. It's like, I just think it's unnatural to humans and, and the way that, um, in that, it's just unnatural to humans. Social media is having a huge, huge, huge impact on our mental health and mostly a very negative one. So I would please, please, please would ask everyone, have a day in a week where you just don't look at it. Don't give yourself the power back into your hands. Try to have a real conversation that is not on WhatsApp, um, you'll be much happier.